Hey guys, Isan and I are having a sleepover. Sleepover time. You wearing makeup before bed? No. <laughs> Hey guys, now that I'm home, I want to show you guys my outfit today. My whole outfit is from Love Benito. I love these trousers and this coat. This brand is known for its super modern, minimalistic, chic wardrobe basics. And they have accessible, ready-to-wear fashion with a wide range of clothing from workwear to party dresses to intimates. I love these blue sweatpants but they have everything you need to fit your everyday life. The reason why I love this brand so much is because it fits golden and olive based skin tones, AKA Asian woman like me. The quality is literally amazing and it feels so great to put it on. I also love styling these pieces with dresses and high knee socks. So you guys should totally check out their website. Upgrade your closet with clothes made to fit you with Love Benito. And right now they have given me a special code to share with you amazing viewers. I love you guys. You guys should go to link in my description. Use this code for 10% off your first order of $130 or more. And let's move on with the video. I ask questions on Instagram for juicy girls hug video. We're gonna start with the first question. Because we have stories for you guys. Types of guys that turn you off. Okay. I don't like a corny guy. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I just... I remember one time I was at a party. And there was this really cute guy. He was like so attractive. And then he started doing TikTok dances. And the clerk. Some weird <laughs> TikTok guy. But yeah, I don't like anybody who's corny. Like, don't tell me weird things. Don't like... Don't weird flex. Don't... No. D yeah, no weird flex. No humble bragging. Or, you know what? Just like idiots. I don't like idiots. This one's juicy. Mm -hmm. I want to hear... Asa has the best womanly advice. Oh. How to make a guy fall in love with you. <sighs> <laughs> I love this <laughs> It's the double E's, okay? That's what I call it. Engagement and entertainment, okay? <laughs> the double E's, okay. You need to be engaging. You need to ask questions. You need to have them ask questions. You need to do the eyes. You need to do, you know, you need to have this appeal that's like- Confident. I, confidence, you know? And this isn't derived from some like crazy fantasy that you're creating because I'm telling you, I've done that before. I looked up what their favorite color was. And then when they said, to, <laughs> they asked me what my favorite color was, I said it was theirs. It wasn't, okay? <laughs> so don't do that, cause it's stupid. So what you need to do is you need to be confident in your own self. You're like, engaging, engaging. Understand. Exactly. Exactly. And this this is engaging. I'm engaging you in the conversation. Relate back to them. Try and find something that you guys find in common. If not, hit the rope. But if so, keep engaging. The other part is entertainment. This is where I think a lot of people lack. Okay. You need to be entertaining. You need to be funny. If you're not funny, if you're not freaking yes and and i would move on i'd walk away because if we're having a conversation and i wasn't making you laugh and i wasn't doing anything like you would be bored so you're not gonna waste their the time. same thing give what you want to receive and if you're giving what you want to receive and you don't receive it move on Ooh, i like that one give what you want to receive mm -hmm. except i would give and i don't receive yeah so then i feel like i feel like I feel like you're a nice person <laughs> and it needs to stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if I'm like a mean person and I see that face, I'm like, oh, that face is so nice. <laughs> I just want to be mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. That has happened to me before. Exactly, because people are crazy. People take advantage of people. And why do people do that to you? If you want the toxic answer, a guy falls in love with you if you give them a little bit of chase, but you have to make sure that you give them a little bit of reassurance. But I think if you want a relationship, don't play games. If you like this person, you should not be playing games because they'll leave you. Look, find another person. Why would they want to stay with you if they play games? We get these. <laughs> One dating in your 20s in New York City like? It's awful. Okay, so everybody said that's awful. <laughs> Sorry. And it is. 
I think dating in my 20s in New York City has been a very big journey of self discovery. She's a dating my 20s and you're 20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little over. I'm into my 20s, okay? I'm into my 20. It's definitely been a lot of trial. I think New York is very, very different to date in than any other city that I've experienced, which is like London, for instance, or LA, maybe. Um, and I think that I know way more people who are in solid, like, committed relationships in London and LA than I have in New York. Like, I probably don't know any. And the relationships I do know are all, like, situationships long-term where there's no commitment at the moment, you know? So, yeah, I think that it's hard. And you always hear, like, these crazy horror stories from your friends about, like, what does that, you know... What does love look like in yeah. this space? And it's always like conformed into something different than like just straight up like, hey, do you want to start dating? Yes. I think that usually it takes like years for people to get to know each other before they become something committed. Mm -hmm. It's definitely romanticized in New York, mm -hmm. but you'll definitely meet people who aren't at that emotional maturity or state where they're ready to be a partner and ready, you know, in a relationship you are are thinking of the other person and not just yourself. And a lot of people aren't ready for that and they don't realize it until problems occur after the honeymoon stage, blah, blah, blah. But like, I think post pandemic, everyone in their twenties is just confused. And they like, we don't really know how to hit on each other. We don't really know if they're interested. How do we approach this person? We can only rely on dating apps. We can only rely on mutual friends. But dating in your twenties is about putting yourself out there. Like you mm. have to, Put yourself in the uncomfortable situation to be able to reach that level of comfort where you can actually get to know them and pass that barrier. But I feel like the problem is most of the guys here that are in their 20s are not looking for relationships. Yeah, I would say so that... So you could date, but you're not going to like date to be in a relationship. For girls, I feel like you should always date older guys because they're at that emotional maturity. They're, they're, they're more, more they're more in line with yeah. like where your head's at and they'll think about you because they've been through more and I think it's rare so to find someone comfort level though. yeah but like my roommates are dating and they're very happy but they moved and met in New York so you never know who you'll meet mm -hmm. there's always people coming in and out of the city exactly so. which what is which is what makes it so special because this is such a young city mm -hmm. you can always meet people when you go out but you just have to be confident and put yourself out there so. you do do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend. What are your standards for men? Here are my standards. These are my personal standards. You come up with what your standards are. Like, I think that's so important because I think that society has always perpetuated this, like, idea that you have to have this Prince Charming, but in reality, how many Prince Charmings do we ever come across? You know? And it doesn't mean that you don't deserve that, but it also means that, you know, are you a perfect person either? Probably not, right? So, in terms of my personal standards, I like somebody who's funny. Like, you have to be funny, you have to be engaging. I don't want to just be like, you know, I think I'm drop dead hilarious, so I can laugh. It's mine too. I can laugh for hours in my bedroom to myself. So why would I be with you, you know? <laughs> and then I think that you have to be somebody who cares for others. Like, I like to go out of my way to care about people that I care about like I don't, I don't know like to care for them to hang out with them to spend time with them and then communication that's my number one standard above anything is communication communication because, is key mm -hmm. you need to be able to articulate your thoughts and I need to be able to hold a conversation with you without us you know breaking out into argument or like whatever I think it's okay to disagree and that's a part of communication and that's healthy but I don't think that it's okay to like bicker and you know kind of you know, pick up on other people's, you know, differences in like a negative light. It's more based on the standards that I hold to myself, which is that I think I'm the best thing to walk this earth. And I don't necessarily need you to as well, but I also, but I need you to understand that I'm right in my own confidence. And if you feel any type of like insecurity by that or whatever, hit the road. Because I'm not, I'm not handling that. I'm not dealing with it. It's not going to happen. So yeah, goal oriented. <clears throat> that is so big so big please please have please, a life please. how do you expect somebody to be there for you if they don't they can't be there for themselves they don't have goals for themselves they don't want to do anything for themselves like do not rely on people like that like i just mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah 
You're not there to be a guy's mother. Oh. You're there to be his partner. So if he's not doing his part, you have to hit the road. So the standard is you have to make sure that you're both putting in equal work. Unless you don't mind putting in the 75% and he's putting in 25%, then that special case, he might be in a very like distressed, emotional state, depressed. You might know him differently. We don't know your guy. Then you have to be confident. You can't let other people like tell you you're not in a good relationship. You have to make sure that you're helping them grow. But they have to be helping you grow. Even if you feel like this person is the one for you, if they're not helping your self-growth, they're not good for you. And if you don't see your self-worth and you're staying with this person, that's something that you need to work on and go to therapy for. Damn, you felt that answer in your soul. <laughs> I think that like it's important to take account you know others experiences because i think that most of the time your experience is the same as my experience is the same as somebody else's experience to an extent so you know if you come around something that you resonate with like you know does that feel right you know if they say you know your man should be holding the door for you whatever like do you want that does that feel right for you and if not don't have it it is so different for every person like some know. people do not care if their men can cook and mm -hmm. I care. I care if you're picky, you know? Mm -hmm. We all have such different things and... Your upbringing has a lot to do with it. Yes. You know? There's a lot of different backgrounds and different things, so you can't expect, you know, everybody to be the same, but you can understand what you like and what you don't like, and that's okay. That's totally fine. I would say, like, your standard should just be, like, at the bare minimum, making sure they're not wishy-washy. Because when they're wishy-washy, it means they're not really prioritizing you. If you're not a priority then you can't make them a priority. Your energy should match theirs and you should be making sure that you're in a good place so that you don't tear yourself down. I like the question, how should I have confidence when talking to my crush? Ooh. My answer to that is literally understand that this is you and this other person is also you, right? So we put this pedestal for somebody that we like have a crush on. And when you do that, you're already setting yourself up for failure because people disappoint you. People you love disappoint you. People you hate disappoint you. People put disappoint. So never look at this conversation as like, oh my God, I'm talking to them because oh my God, they're talking to you. You know, like you're just as cool. You're just as important. And at the end of the day, you know, you don't know how the other person feels about you. Don't glorify them over yourself by you know being nervous and things like that i think for me personally like when i have a crush like it takes like a month for me to build up courage because i like the reassurance that i'm also someone else's crush i think it's okay to like have a slow process like be with the person that you are at the moment you know enjoy the crush journey enjoy the chase whatever if i'm gonna be realistic of like you know what does it feel like to be nervous you know you're not gonna be thinking oh i'm so much cooler than them like realistically you're probably thinking holy shit i like this person i don't want to mess up right so yeah. the key really act calm act super super calm you know listen to what they're saying don't get in your head because when you start getting in your head that's when you start getting nervous and you start thinking about the little things that you do and those little things they're not noticing if you're acting cool calm and collected you're engaged you're answering what they have to say you're responding appropriately that's the key because that shows confidence advice for like confidence when talking to like my crush like i searched up how to channel divine femininity because that's what people are attracted to, like this inner confidence in being very like nurturing and compassionate and like having strong intuition. The question you should always ask is, what do you feel like your purpose is? I yeah, think true. I always ask that question because- Ask yourself, what do you want from this? I mean, ask them. Oh, ask them? But in it's the your crush. Yeah. I'm telling you, it works every single time. Oh, what's your end goal in life? Yeah, they like talking about themselves. Those. Get them talking about yourself, themselves. And honestly, <laughs> I like it because I'm like, I don't, I just want to sit there, look at you, and listen. Oh, how to have a glow up. Oh my gosh. So all the bro boys turn their heads around to look at you. See, now you ruined the question. It's how to have a glow up, period. Okay? We're not doing this for a man. <laughs> oh, that's because good. that's the key. That's how you glow up. When I'm looking at myself, I'm not thinking about, like, oh, 
should I do my makeup like this for a man to like me? Oh, should I? Mm -mm. We're in the era of doing things for the girls, okay? So when you're striving for something like that, where you think you look good, I promise you that's where the glow up comes in. Because I think there's nothing better than confidence. And also when you are going to gatherings, if you're going to gatherings where you are expecting people that you used to have a crush on or that you're potentially interested in to be there, you have to be wearing something that you feel confident in, not that you think that they would like. Because if you think about what their opinion is, then you're just going to dwell on that the whole night and hope and pray that they recognize that you wore certain things to compliment yourself versus what you actually felt comfortable in. Don't be approachable, just be you, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless approachable is you. And it is to the right people because you, you don't want the wrong people approaching you. Thank you.